Today, our weekly affirmation is, I am good enough. Our topic today is creating a safe space when your child is upset. Hi friends, welcome to My Team Tangerine Podcast Season 1, Episode 3. I'm your host, Hannah Mish. When your child is feeling stressed, angry, hurt, or sad, they often seek safe and comforting places. These places are your child's safe spaces because they help them to recover and manage their feelings. The environment of these safe spaces nurtures your child in a passive way. These safe spaces can occur naturally in and around your home. For example, most children's bedroom is a common place they gravitate towards when they're needing comfort. Sometimes comforting spaces don't come in full-size rooms. Sometimes they are mini-sized areas. This can be a child-made fort, a little hiding spot they love to bring their blanket or stuffed animal to, a reading nook, and it can even be a favorite chair in the living room. However, there are ways to create safe spaces in your home for your child in a specific area. But why the need to create a safe space? It is not so much that you're creating a safe space from the ground up, but that you're being more intentional about what makes an area or room feel like a safe space. Simple adjustments can turn an ordinary room into an area that is rejuvenating and calming simply by being in that space. Think of a time when you visited a place that felt calm and rejuvenating to be in. This could be a spa room, a hotel or Airbnb, a church or a friend's home. Now close your eyes and pull on all the details of that memory. The smells, the temperature, the feel and color of the decor, the sounds, the people, and the lighting. Intentionally creating a space in your home that feels comforting like this is a powerful tool for you and your child. The first thing about a safe space is the name of it, safe. There should be no form of violence in the space. Even the memory of yelling and arguing can taint a space in a way. Now, does that mean that if your kids have an argument in their bedroom, that the bedroom can't be seen as a safe space anymore? No. What it means is during the argument, the room won't be seen as a safe space. It also means that you may want to do something to clear the energy in a way. Well, what does that mean? Have you ever walked into a room after a couple of people were arguing and you can still feel the tension in the air? Well, emotions have energy and it takes time for them to clear. But you can also do some routines after an argument to clear that kind of residual energy from a room, especially if it is seen as a safe space. You can do things like burn a candle or incense, open a window, tidy up, vacuum, sweep or dust, or spray some essential oils. Doing these things with the intention of cleaning the space of negativity is a great way of creating emotional and mental closure and really moving on from the moment. For me, my go-to routine for after an argument and at the end of the day are burning candles or incense and opening windows when the weather is warm enough. After an illness, it is burning incense, washing all fabric items, and spraying essential oils. When looking at the details of your safe space, start with your senses, sight, touch, smell, and sound. You and your child are unique with how you perceive your environment. For example, smells are big for me and sounds come in a close second for priorities. For both my children, touch is important. So soft and fuzzy blankets, furniture, rugs, pillows, and stuffed animals are a top priority. But thinking about the order will help you prioritize what your child needs most importantly to create a safe space. So let's go through the different qualities that are usually present in a safe space as a jumping off point for you and your child. First, let's start with sight. Low lighting or natural lighting is very common. Also consider the color palette in the space. Calming colors include blues and greens. Now, natural tans, browns, and off-whites can be soothing and grounding, too. Lastly, colors come in a wide variety of shades, from muted or subtle to very bright and vibrant. There is no right or wrong. It is about meeting your child's needs in the space. Second, let's talk about touch. Most children, like my own, like soft, fuzzy items. 
You can also vary the texture if there is a pattern or design or stitching on the fabric, or you could control the amount of fabric texture. Things like tags, seams, or zippers on pillows may need to be addressed if your child is particularly sensitive. More natural, organic materials like cotton, wool, and hemp can make a difference for some individuals too. Third is smell. If your child is really sensitive, just trying to keep any strong odor managed comes down to good circulation and cleanliness in the area. An air purifier can really be helpful for sensitive children too. If your child likes certain smells, then using essential oil sprays can create that for them. Some smells that are calming in nature are lavender, lemon, rose, chamomile, and orange. Fourth is sound. A safe space is usually quiet, but some sort of calming music or white noise can be beneficial for some kids. Two types of music to consider are classical and solfeggio. For white noise, fan sounds, ocean, and naturescape music are often very calming too. For kids who are particularly sensitive to noises, you can also put on some sort of noise-canceling headphones on them as well. Other details to consider are keeping the temperature of the room comfortable for the child. 70 degrees is a great temperature to start at. Having a bin with some calming activities like puzzles, books, fidgets, and paper and markers near or in the safe space. Keep the space free of too much clutter. And lastly, avoid rearranging or changing the space too frequently. When this space is created, give your child plenty of time to hang out in it, leisurely, to make positive memories with the space. This will further reinforce the safe space concept. They are safe, calm, and happy here. Then the child will be more likely to gravitate towards the space when they're feeling stressed or emotionally dysregulated. Now, even though these safe spaces are meant as positive coping tools, be aware that sometimes they can end up as a place to hide, avoid, or escape. The best way to manage this potential downside to a safe space is to do regular check-ins with your child. This means communicating and resolving whatever is causing your child stress after they have calmed down. Three questions to ask your child are how are you feeling, what are you needing, and how can you get your needs met? If you feel the problem is bigger than you can handle, seek professional help for your child. It is okay to ask for help because this is part of growing and learning. Now I want to introduce my wonderful daughter, Olivia. Hi, Olivia. Hi. So we're talking about areas in our homes that feel really comforting to us. And I was curious as to what areas in our home make you feel comforted and calm when you're feeling upset. Um, well, the places that I find um, enjoyable to be in is probably my bedroom or outside. Those are the two places I feel. Okay, your bedroom. And where outside? Where do you, anywhere in the yard or? Yeah, pretty much anywhere. Um, but I like to go to um, trees or something in the shade um, and do something quiet and calming. And what, what would you do calming outside by a tree in the shade? Sometimes I'll bring a book out and I'll read. Um, or sometimes I'll just play with my fairies or something like that to calm me down. Um, now, inside in your bedroom, what makes that feel like a really safe space for you to be in when you're trying to calm down? Well, it's because I sleep in there, so naturally that's calming. Yeah, that makes <laughs> So sense. I either go on my bed or um, I'll see it, sit at the desk and draw um, or read a book, some, something like that along those lines. Um, so yeah, that's, that's normally what I do when I need to go somewhere where nobody else is. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing today, Olivia. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm going to end our podcast with a quote from the picture book, The Little Red Fort by Brenda Mayer. Not so fast, Ruby said. You didn't help me draw the plans or gather the supplies 
or cut the boards or hammer the nails. You said I didn't know how to build and you laughed at me. I'm going to play in the fort by myself. And she did. Ruby's fort is likely a safe space for her. Part of the process of creating that safe space was her knowing what she wanted, communicating that to those around her, and then achieving it, even when there was adversity. Now with all the qualities of a safe space fresh in your mind, go walk around your home and see what you discover. Thank you for joining me today. Have a wonderful week. You can visit us for more helpful resources on our website, myteamtangerine.com.